Hi everybody, welcome back to my channel and today I am going to be answering, a, doing a VR, a video response to the Woodland Hags 11 questions for the season of The Witch. I'm pretty sure that this is her tag. Um, I actually saw this, I found the Woodland Hag through Benabel who put this on her blog and I thought, oh my gosh, first of all, I have to go and subscribe to the Woodland Hag immediately and so should you. And secondly, I had to answer these questions. Perfect time of year. I'm doing a lot of um, free workshops for witchcraft and great questions to kind of reflect because some of them are a lot deeper than sort of your 101 stuff. So I'm going to dive in and we're going to do this together. I'm very excited. And I've got my coffee, my coffee. Okay, number one. In what way, which pagan, wise woman, etc., do you choose to identify and why? I am a witch. I love that word so much. Love it, love it, love it, love it, love it. I, I find it really funny when people try to use it in a negative kind of, like I'm wearing witch earrings, when um, people try to use it in a negative way, because I love it. Just when people like say bitch, I'm like, whatever. Um, I'm so glad that the word witch has become a, um, there's this reclaiming. Now, the reason why, wise woman, I think I'd have to, I think I'd, no. <laughs> I mean, I certainly don't think everything that comes out of my mouth is bullshit, but I wouldn't say that I'm in that wise woman space. I'm definitely, definitely a witch. Um, why do I call myself a witch? I practice witchcraft. That's pretty much number one. Um, I practice witchcraft. Uh, I commune with spirit. I bring forth and prophesy you know, messages for people for a living. I run a coven. I'm a high priestess in a coven. I'm a witch. I'm a hundred percent witch from my tippy top of my head down to my mini, mini toes and all my energy fields. That is exactly how I choose to identify with. And I love everything associated with that word. Um, you know, even the crap that we get and the misunderstanding that the word witch and witchcraft get, I, I delight in sharing as much content as possible and reaching people. I'm not probably going to change a lot of people's minds if they're super religious or they have a very um, narrow mind about the way we label ourselves because labels really are just a construct, right? But, I, you know, I'm a normal normal person, <laughs> as normal as a weirdo can be, but weirdo in like a good way. <laughs> um, but I'm definitely a witch. I... Uh, was trained as a Wiccan, uh, definitely have very strong Wiccan roots, still follow the Wheel of the Year, still follow a lot of mythologies that are very um, connected to a Wicca, um, but I'm not, uh, I don't follow like a Gardnerian or Alexandrian or anything like that to a T. Um, that's just not my Jimmy Jams. Uh, pagan. Okay, so I don't live off the land or as close to the land as I would want to be living if I was going to call myself a pagan. So I'm pagan in the regards to the umbrella term of pagan coming into a spirituality that is connected to the earth um, and, and recognizing and honoring the seasons of the sun and the moon. Um, but I'm not, I, I don't, I have such a black thumb. <laughs> I kill cactus. I'm not even kidding you. I am terrible at, I'm not a, a garden hedge witch. If the end of the world were to come and everyone, someone needed a, a farmer or something to look after a thing, I'm like, nope, give me a bow and arrow and something to like, you know, uh, shoot or defend. <clears throat> no problem. I, I'm not, let me take care of the animals. I would, but I can't, I don't know. So I'm not really pagan, <clears throat> but definitely witch. Number two, what does my daily practice look like? My daily practice is, I guess for some people it would seem like it's a lot, but for me, I think I've been doing this so long. It just kind of comes very, very naturally to me. So uh, first thing in the morning, I get up and I take my puppy Thor out for a walk and I go into nature. That has been something that has really been a transformation for me because I didn't always go out first thing in the morning 
But now I meet the dawn, especially now during this time of the year when the sun rises so much later. So I'm seeing a lot of things that I normally wouldn't have if I was to, you know, stay in bed because it is freaking freezing outside. So I go and do that. And not only is that, you know, the dog needs to go out and we need to go for a walk, but it's a beautiful way to start the day to get that, that fresh air in my lungs and stretch my body and start to move my metabolism and wake up in a way that's like, honestly, it's like <laughs> here, if you have a, having trouble waking up, just go outside because <laughs> you'll get hit with the hit with the cold. Um, and then I would come back and I've got a lot of mum duties. I've got a lot of duties that I need to do. Uh, you know, for work wise, I set up my tarot altar. I said, I always go and um, activate my abundance altar, my prosperity altar. So I'll set those up. And then a lot of the times if I'm not writing and then I've got different stones and things that I will use for writing to open up my chakras, I want to always connect that through from my heart. So open those up and start the process or or connect with my guides to start doing my work. Um, If I'm doing more admin stuff, and then I have my office hours, basically. So my office hours are usually from 9.30 after I drop my son off at school till like 2.50 from when I have to go pick him up. And then that time I work and because my work is spiritual uh, and because a lot of my work is working with the craft, uh, it's very much in that. And then um, I'd have my mum duties until bedtime and then I meditate at night. So I meditate often when my son is going to sleep because um, he will sleep through anything um, when he's asleep, like in regards to noise, but getting him to sleep, he kind of, we prefer, we have like a ritual. We have a ritual. It's, you know, we, we read the books and we do the things and we have the cuddles and he goes to bed. So I meditate while he's falling asleep. I usually go to bed quite early because I'm up to rise quite early. I, I Even if I'm not having my <laughs> insomnia time, I, that is my daily practice. It does change because I have a very robust monthly practice um, within regards to workshops, you know, full moon rituals, Sabbath spells, you know, I, so it's like, it never ends. The magic is pretty much 24 seven. What do I, number three. So what do I do for self care? So self care for me, a lot of my self care has come from honoring my boundaries and getting help. So for many years, I've been working, um, my business has been running now for something like, I don't know, six years, certainly since Dom Dom is five and a half. So it's, it's around that, um, around that mark. I think we're in our sixth year and self care. I burnt myself out a lot, a lot, a lot, getting everything off the ground. And that's kind of normal for an entrepreneur, like, especially for someone who's doing it on their own. And I had to learn how to say no. I had to learn how to get help. I had to learn how to, um, so yeah, I just had to learn a lot of boundaries, um, and to listen to my body. So I used to push myself a lot. And especially when I got very sick this early this year, just learning, what's toxic and what's not and what's right for me in my personal life so it doesn't affect everything else in every everywhere else. Um, so self-care to me is taking care of my mental health. So I had um, postpartum depression after my son and it was not treated for a very long time, uh, which made it harder to get out of. And so then I was on treatment uh, medication for a year and did a lot of work around that. And then um, probably a year ago, I went on a different medication uh, for my anxiety and depression. So I've spoken about mental health a lot. I don't know if I've ever just said outright, you know, I take medications for for that, but I do. I um, I have for a while, but the, the kickoff for me was having a son halfway across the world from my family. Most of my family, I have a sister here. And thank the goddess for her. I do not know what I would do without her. Um, so that was the the, mo- the tipping point uh, for me. And then learning just to take care of my mental health and not to have it something that is I feel shame about. That is really fucking important. And self-care for me is having quality time with my son and quality time with my family and my friends. That's self-care. Um, ritual for me is not really about a lot of self-care. 
Um, it is for me magic. It is for me communion. It is for me doing the work, you know, like doing the magic. Um, it's not really about the self-care. Um, and self-care is taking care of my business and so that I don't have to stress about, you know, paying, having the roof over my head and, you know, taking care of my son. But there's a lot of mon- I find a lot of magic and mundane very much overlaps. And there is a lot of, there's a lot of very important muggle stuff that we need to do in order to, um, you know, really take care of ourselves. And that's something that I have learned from many years of doing this work, being a full-time tarot reader and author and all sorts and have being a single mother and taking care of my son. Uh, yeah. So that's self-care for me. Number four, what do I do to take care of nature, wildlife and the environmental animals? So I would love to say that I'm vegan, but I'm not. I have been vegetarian before in the past. Um, so I realize that that is a, a pretty big one. What do I do? So I have a puppy. Um, I do not use any plastic. I use all biodegradable plastic bags for his waste. There are a lot of brands that say that they are green. It's green is like the color. If you actually read it, it says this box is made out of recycled materials, not the bags. I use either the ones made, I use mostly the ones made out of cornstarch. You can get them in, they are a little bit more expensive. You can get them in the shops, you can get them on Amazon. Um, but I refuse to put, my dog goes to the bathroom more than once a day and I refuse to put that much fucking plastic in the in the bin. No way. So I don't use any plastic bags for that. Um, my sister and I, she really got me onto um, recycling everything. So we even recycle all of our soft plastics. Um, we, our business is completely carbon offset from, oh, I have to find out what the website is, but basically you go into this, this website and you choose how your carbon footprint for your business is used. So we put, um, one of the ones we all, we got to pick which, which charities we wanted to put the carbon offset money on, which I think is about $40 US a month. Um, and it, it calculates your business wise and my one that I picked was cleaning the oceans. Um, Jamie picked one that helped women get education around the world. So we are completely carbon offsetted um, from our business. Um, I don't use plastic. I'm going back to uh, for shipping into cardboards. Uh, I recycle as much as possible. I thrift. Um, I pick up rubbish when we go to the park. I've done that a ton of times when I'm walking the dog because, like, again, I walk the dog multiple times a day. So I'll pick up rubbish and garbage. Oh, people are the fucking, they're so bad here in Vancouver. I don't know if it's because there hasn't been like some, you know, um, PSA shaming around littering, but there really is in Australia or they don't find enough. I don't know what it is, but there is trash everywhere and it's so disgusting. So that, um, is definitely something. And we have thankfully here, the green bins as well. So I do as much as I can outside of like, obviously I still eat animals. Um, yeah, so I'm sure a lot of people kind of don't dig that, but I do as much as I can uh, to offset um, as much as possible. How do I help heal or support humans or humanity? So the carbon offsetting is one of them with helping the oceans and also helping people get education um, around the world. I'm also a part of uh, programs that put books into schools. Um, I donate a ton of stuff. I just took a whole bunch of donations to the library. Um, I guess it's like, I don't want to be a wanker and say my, my work is helping humanity. I mean, I don't know, maybe it makes someone happy. Um, does that help? Or it helps someone one day with the work that I do, but I don't think I'm that fucking special. Like I'm not, you know, I'm not erasing people's student debt or medical debt. I mean, I wish I could. I would if I could. Um, so I don't really know if that's the case. But, you know, one of the things I try to do and I try to do it every single day is I try to be kind. Um, we never know what people are going through. And a smile and a hello and just being kind to people can just... God, it can really help. Even if I'm like having a bad day with my mental health or my, um, I get really bad plantar fasciitis and some days it hurts to walk. 
Um, so if I get have I have that, if I'm having that, I will be very cognizant and aware not to push that onto other people if I'm going through pain, um, especially my son, and uh, being just being kind as much as I possibly can and contributing to his community at school and things like that. But again, I I don't know I don't know if I'm help if anything that I'm doing is <laughs> if I'm doing is helping humanity. Uh, number six, what is my understanding of a higher power? So I am very much a part of the group of people who believes that we are probably not going to understand the higher power fully until we are dead. <laughs> I think that's one of the greatest mysteries in the final initiations of life is to go death and to figure out what this is all about. If it's anything at all, it could be just some random act of random and practical joke and we just get snuffed out. God, I hope not, but you know, you never know. Uh, what I believe it to be is... Um, a energy that is connected through and to and through everything and everyone and the big bang was the god and goddess creating the universe that is expanding and it is going to go back in on itself and do the big bang again it just happens very slowly i believe that time isn't linear um that it is something that we can reach across and go back and that's where a lot of things like ancestral healing and uh, premonition and all that sort of stuff comes from. Um, I believe that we can't see every realm because we can't see every color on the spectrum. So we don't know what else is out there in our energies. Um, I believe that all mythologies, all godheads, everything like that simply speaks to people in the language that they're going to understand it for the lifetime the geographical location, their understanding, their environment, the voice they need to hear it. So whether that is Muhammad, whether that is Buddha, whether that is Jesus, whether that is Zorb or whoever Scientologists believe, whether that's paganism and you are someone who is working with Odin and the the gods of the North Pantheon, or you are working with Brigitte and the Celtics. It's it's just it's the thing that connects you to the divine. It's just the same way why we have so much different type of music and why we have so many different books and why we like different art. It's like we all don't speak the same language. Otherwise, how boring, firstly, would that be? Um, and I believe it's imperfect. And in, in, in its imperfection, it's perfect because we are imperfect perfections ourselves. Um, so we reflect, right? So that's why we have old pagan gods that have faults and all sorts of stuff. That's my understanding. It's like this big, beautiful energy and multifaceted diamond that sometimes we see one face, sometimes we see something else and that we don't understand everything. Um, I think if I think it's very ignorant to say that you understand everything or that we're alone in the universe because we don't know everything. We simply do not know. <clears throat> Number seven, what is the most important life lesson I have learned so far? That's a deep one. Oh, shit. That's a really deep one because it's quite a few lessons. If I could say anything like to my son. That's really hard. That's really, really, that's got me stuck because... Oh, I think one of the things that I've that can kind of sum it up is that people may not remember what you said to them or what you did for them. People will often remember how you made them feel. And while the craft and while I absolutely believe in being responsible for how I am in the world and my impact on others and my impact on the world and my contribution to society and all that sort of stuff, the good and the bad. And I do understand that there are other people who push their will onto others and then, and victim blaming is never cool. And I would never do that. If you can have interactions with people that leave them feeling as though you see the light in them or you see the human in them or the kindness in them or the strength in them, the human, whatever it may be. If you can be kind in the world and leave people feeling good, 
you have no idea how, and that goes back to my kindness thing, right? You have no idea how far reaching that can be. Um, often it's more impactful than we may know. Uh, and really the other thing that I would say is about authenticity and authenticity is not a hashtag. It's not something that you can fake on social media. It's not something that you can poster and it's not an aesthetic that you can go after. Authenticity is really being very fucking comfortable in your own skin, which I am. I'm very proud to say that I feel very comfortable in my own skin. I love the person that I am, not in a way that I'm stuck up, but I like who I am. I've worked very hard to like the person that I am. Sure. I could change a couple of things and I'm always working on myself and I'm always being self-reflective and trying to do better, but I like who I am. Um, so, but that's authenticity. That is being who I am. I'm a weirdo. Like I love geeky stuff and I love Disney and I love gaming and I love D and D and I'm an absolute geek. And you know, so that I'm a, we- I you know, break out a song every now and then, and I don't apologize for any of it. And I used to apologize all the time for being loud and opinionated and sticking up for people and, you know, all that kind of shit. I don't do that anymore. And I've, and I used to do it a lot to, um, be accepted and fuck that basically, because I don't want to be around people who can't handle how much I shine, how loud I am. I mean, I know when to shut my mouth too, but like when to be quiet, let's just say, or, or to like read the room, you know, but I'm a loud person. I'm a gregarious person. And I guess to really dim that down for a lot of people. And I don't fucking do that no more. Um, so those, I guess that was two, but it's very important. And how, and number eight, how, and how does this learn lesson affect my values and my attitudes? So I think I've spoken a little bit about that. Um, I, when you try to be smaller for other people, you are wronging yourself. You're shaming yourself. Then you can start to feel guilty about taking up space being heard, being seen. I don't do that anymore. Um, I allow other people to be themselves. I've found that in not, in being authentic and allowing myself to be, let my freak flag fly. That is a tongue twister if you do that too quick. I have really found that my judgments of others have gone right out the fucking window to the point now where if I hear a judgment about someone that I may have had about myself I'm like, you know, like it really throws me back. So, um, I'm kind of like, oh, well that, why would you even think that? Why would you even go there? And I'm not talking about judging shitty people for shitty things that they do or having a bitch session because you need to vent from your, you know, to a, a close person. But I mean, just like, you know what I mean? Like people who judge people all the time and don't stop to see the commonalities or the, uh, the humanity in people or the, what brings people together or the, the fact that they're really just like shitting on themselves. Like one of them, um, I'm going to use this one because it just came to my mind is, you know, people being, being awful about people's weight and saying, Oh, that person, what a, you know, fat, whatever. And I'm like, really, if fat is the worst thing you can call somebody, then like, really? Like, why are you even opening your mouth? Like there are worse things that people can be so many worse things that people can be than overweight. But yet so many people go for that easy, like that easy low blow um, because of something that they hate about themselves or something that they um, struggle with internally, whether it's, you know, they, they binge secretly or they had awful experiences at home with um, parents who always called them fat, even though they weren't or whatever it may be. There is a myriad of shit that goes on with people. So I'm not going to go into all of it, but I hope that kind of made sense. I kind of went off on a little bit of a tangent there and the kindness, how has that helped my attitude? I'm a happier person by far by choosing kindness. More doors have opened for me. More genuine experiences have opened for me. More shining sunlight, beautiful people have entered my world than before. And that's because I want to come to the table and bring kind heart. I would, like I said before, I would be like kind heart bear. Um, I'd probably be swear bear, kind heart bear. She'll like hug you, but tell other people to fuck off at the same time. (laughs) That's a care bear I can get behind. Um, But uh, I want to come to the table with kindness because I found that just a, a small dash of very authentic kindness 
bridges just so much and it heals so much. So I found that that's made me a happier person and it's helped my happy radiate to other people. And hopefully it's like that beautiful ripple effect of positivity. Um, yeah. Um, number nine, what is my most spooky experience? <clears throat> so this happened a very long time ago. I was probably 21 at the time. Oh gee, that was a long time ago. Um, I was, so this, uh, this is the spookiest thing that's ever happened to me. So it happened a long time ago. I was living with my boyfriend at the time and I woke up in the middle of the night and I couldn't move. Um, I felt like someone was sitting, something was sitting on my chest. Um, I felt an immense pressure. I couldn't open my eyes. I couldn't scream. I couldn't speak. I couldn't move my hands, nothing. And I usually lie on my side as I'm sleeping, but I was flat on my back and this immense pressure and this awful fucking presence. And I was trying to move my arms so I could hit my boyfriend awake and I couldn't move. And I was just having like this panic and I, this is why I will never apologize for swearing. And I said to the, uh, the thing in my energy to fuck off and it kind of nudged a little bit, but it wasn't enough. It wasn't enough anger. It wasn't enough force. So I said it again in my mind as much as I could and it didn't work. And the third time I like mustered as much anger, like how fucking dare you come at me. And I pushed this ball of light and I had been working, I've been doing which I've been doing witchcraft, but I had been, I'd found the craft very early at, at 15. So at this point I'd done a lot of meditation, training, energy training, all that sort of stuff that is the 101, the foundations and the basics of the craft. And so I pushed this massive ball of energy out from me like a big I mean you see a lot of special effects now with the superpower like super superheroes off of me and I just screamed fuck off and as I did that I sat upright and screamed fuck off that woke up my boyfriend and he's like are you okay and I just passed right back out again and I woke up like I don't know how many hours later and he was like do you remember doing that he thought I just had like a dream and went back to sleep and then I told him what happened. That was pretty scary. That was paralytic. That was very frightening. Um, I had a lot of very spooky, shitty experiences as a kid as well. But that was probably the the spookiest experience. I've had so many ghost experiences. I could talk all day and night about it. Um, honestly, <laughs> just a fuck ton of them. But um, that was the, probably the scariest. And that happened a long, long time ago. Um, so thankfully, I don't have anything new to say and nor do I want anything new. Thank you very much. Um, number 10 would have, would I or have I ever cursed or hexed anyone? Probably unintentionally, intentionally. No, I've banished someone. I've banished a couple of people out of my life. I have stopped people from harming other people in a way that freezes them, not banishes them or ties them or binds them. Because banishing is different to binding. Banishing is when you send something away. Binding is when you stop someone from doing something. But often when you bind someone, you're binding them to yourself in a way. You have to be the anchor of that. That's how I understand binding magic. So I rarely do binding. Um, I have never hexed someone intentionally. I'm sure I have done it with the power of my <laughs> rage, uh, um, uh, caused some shit to happen. Uh, and, um, I've been told, you know, I got told in my corporate job that I'm the kind of person, if I'm having a bad day, the whole office would feel it. And I was a manager. <laughs> so I get that I might've been a bit of a rain, rain cloud some days or been able to affect things. Um, I know how to use my energy to um, project. Uh, so if I want someone to fuck off, I can certainly try and do that. But I've never hexed anybody. I understand the mechanics of it. I understand how to. Um, I read about it. It's a part of your, your training for second degree often or your third degree, depending on um, what tradition you're a part of and what coven you're studying with. Um, but I haven't ever really done it. I've done a lot of sending love and healing the wound between the two people, if, especially for myself. Um, I've done that for, for people I've had issues with. 
um, to finally let them go. Um, but I've never hexed anyone because I didn't want the karma, basically. As much as it's lovely to think about it and to verbalize it and say, I'm going to do like, you know, you have those moments when someone's really wronged you. You're like, I'm going to do this and do that. I've never actually done it. And I've had like, I feel like just cause a few times in my life. Um, I'm not going to dissect that as to why, but I've had just cause um, from betrayals that I could have just gone in and just fucked some shit up. And I've just walked away from the situation, just not interested. Um, and then finally, number 11, if I could live anywhere, where would it be? This is a really tricky one because for me, I really, I need to be around my people. I'm an extrovert. I, um, I have a lot of very close relationships and a lot of them I miss very dearly. And they, a lot of them are in Australia and I now live in Canada. So that's a very long way away. So if I could live anywhere, like, let's just say that I was like a genie for a day or whatever, I would take all of my friends <laughs> from all over the world and have this beautiful island, <laughs> and plonk them all there. <laughs> and we would live self-sustainingly um, off the, off the island, this beautiful island and we would honor the earth and they could carry out whatever religions they choose because I have friends from different religions as well. But I would just want to be around my friends more. Um, so, but where I live for me, I, I mean, I love Vancouver, but I do miss Australia a lot, especially because of the ocean, my connection to the Indian Ocean in particular. But where, if I could live anywhere where would I, where would I live, right now where I am is pretty perfect. I live in a pretty old apartment. <laughs> But it's it's done it's done me great. I don't want a lot in life um, in regards to needing a ton of shit and needing to possess a lot of things. <clears throat> I have a lot of decks and a lot of crystals and a lot of stationery and a lot of witchy stuff. But I don't strive to have the newest phone or the newest car or the newest gadgets or whatever. I'm just not that type of person. So. <clears throat> home really is where the heart is and my heart is my son my heart is my family my heart is my friends and as long as I'm around people like that then I am a pretty happy bunny rabbit and as long as I have a roof over my head and safety then and that got a little bit like wah, wah, like <laughs> a, little, <laughs> a little bit fuzzy there but it's true it's it's pretty true so I'm going to those are my my replies I am going to um Stick this, stick this. <laughs> I'm going to have the video response, uh, the, the original video by um, the Woodland Hag, I believe her name was again. Yes, the Woodland Hag. And also uh, Benabelle's blog post, because that's how I found this tag. Go ahead and do this tag yourself if you feel inclined. Thank you for watching. I know this was a long one, um, but I really wanted to jump on and, and kind of answer these questions and have a bit of a pontificate myself. I hope you enjoyed and I'll see you all next time.